Good evening again, everyone. Welcome back again for another nightly tuck-in, good night story, and good night special guest. Uh, tonight, I wanted to show you, I'm especially proud and excited to show you one of my favorite pairs of pajamas that I wore tonight. I wore my Doctor Who full onesie. It is one of my absolute favorite pairs of pajamas and I'm really excited I get to share it with you tonight and I'm hoping that you all have some wonderful pajamas on as well. So last night when we tuned in we read the very beginning of The Great K-Pop Tree by Lynn Sherry and this evening I figured we'd read the middle and tomorrow when you come back to join us we'll finish it up and read the end. So without further ado Let's get back to the story. Let's first recap what we did so far. Two men walked into the rainforest. The larger man pointed to a great K-pop tree and told a smaller man to take his ax and chop at the K-pop tree. But he grew tired. And when he went to rest at the trunk of the tree, he was visited by a boa constrictor and also that very special iguana. He was also visited by a bee and some butterflies. He was visited by a troop of monkeys and some beautiful birds. Oh, we know all about birds. And he was even visited by some small tree frogs who all asked him to please not chop down the great K-pop tree. So let's see who visits the man this evening. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended in to the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines. Oh, that's another one of my favorites. The prehensile tail porcupine. Prehensile means that their tail acts like a balance help them climb and help them hold on. So four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen! And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen! If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the K-pop tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future, and surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. That sounds like great advice for our current situation. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice, Senor! How much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? <coughs> Let's do one more page for tonight. A child from the Yanomamo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. 
Oh, I wonder, I so wonder what's gonna happen tomorrow. It'll be very, very exciting to find out what happens with the sleeping man and the great kapok tree and all of the wonderful animals of the rainforest. Now, I think it's time for us to say our good night to our special guest. Last night, we met Moana, the iguana, who I forgot to tell you was from the rainforest, just like in our story, we saw a picture of her. Now tonight, we are going to meet a dragon and say good night, dragon. So this is Loki, and Loki is a bearded dragon. And bearded dragons are actually from Australia. They really are, I promise. And bearded dragons get their name because of a very special part under their chin, where when they get really upset or angry or scared, they puff up under there and their scales, that's what made reptiles special, kind of lift up a little bit. It's hard to see because he's not very angry with me right now, but it looks dark and black like a beard. So they call him a bearded dragon. Now Loki is a lizard and lizards are a type of reptile. And yesterday we found out three things that made reptiles special. So I figured today we're going to review some of them and maybe later this week we'll review them again with some other reptiles. We'll see. You'll have to tune in. So Loki, as I said, is absolutely covered in lots of cool scales, even spiky ones up here that when he gets scared and puffed up, they kind of hurt a little bit if you tried to eat him or if you tried to grab him. That helps protect him from predators. And Loki, although not doing it right now, also sheds skin because reptiles have scales and reptiles shed skin. And since Loki didn't have any scales for us to see that he shed, I brought with me my bag of shed skin that I saved. So I'm gonna bring out some so you can see it better this evening. So here's a really big piece. These are all mostly from snakes. See that big piece of shed skin? Yeah. Now snakes, which we may learn about later this week, they shed their skin all in one piece, like taking off a sock. But reptiles like lizards, it often comes off in pieces. Let's see, like I said, this is mostly snake shed. Here's a snake shed. We're gonna see more of that at some point soon, all in one piece. Look at that. So reptiles have scales and reptiles shed skin. And what was that other thing that was really cool about reptiles? I know, Loki, you're not flying, I promise. I'll hold you tight. Do you remember what it was? It's the reason reptiles need to be warm and they need to go maybe near the sun or lay on a warm rock. It's because they're ectothermic. They're cold blooded and they need to get their body warm so that they can have lots and lots of energy so they can catch their food and eat it. Loki likes to eat a lot of cool foods. I like to give Loki some salads, maybe some fruits and veggies, and Loki also loves to eat bugs. Yeah, like crickets or worms. Those are some of his favorites. And since we didn't talk about it yesterday, Moana the iguana likes all salads and lots of yummy fruits and veggies to eat. But Loki, Loki does enjoy a really good insect from time to time. So let's see, we talked about those three things yesterday and again tonight. Let's remember what they are and maybe we can try that, that kind of silly song that I made up. So reptiles have scales, reptiles shed skin, and reptiles are ectothermic. And let's say, maybe we can remember together what that song was. I wonder if I remember it because I made it up yesterday. Let's see, it goes, reptiles have scales all around, all around. Reptiles shed skin when they grow, when they grow. And reptiles, they're cold blooded, they're ectothermic, they're ectothermic. I think I got it this time. Should we do it one more time? before we say goodnight dragon. I think so, what do you think, Loki? 
Reptiles have scales all around, all around. Reptiles shed skin when they grow, when they grow. And reptiles, they're cold-blooded. They're ectothermic. They're ectothermic. What do you think, Loki? Is it time to say goodnight? I think it is. I think I'm ready for bed. And, and I got pooped on, so I need to get a bath. Thanks, Loki. I appreciate it. I was wondering why you're sitting so still. Well, it's time to say good night to everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you again so much for joining us. See you tomorrow.